Hello, welcome to another informative episode on white baby gardening and worm farm. I, Han White. Hi, Sian. Okay, so in today's live, we're going to be discussing mulching, the advantages and the disadvantages of it. Okay, I just need to silence all my devices. I apologize for taking up your time to do this. Hi everyone. I know there are some of you on the live that I'm not able to see. Thank you all for joining me. So we're going to be discussing mulching, as I said before, the advantages and the disadvantages of it. So what is mulching? Mulching is using organic material to cover the soil so that it can keep the weed down and help to keep the moisture in. So what are some of the advantages of mulching, do you know? I guess some of it was just mentioned in the answer for what mulching is. Okay, so um, one of the advantage of mulching is that it reduces the growth of weed in your garden. So it is a very effective way to control weed. Of course, you can always use things like newspaper and cardboard to keep down, to keep down your weed. But when you mulch, When you mulch, it lasts longer than the cardboard and the paper would because with time, a short period of time, the moisture is going to soak through the paper and make it easy for weed to get through it. And it will take a bit longer for the cardboard, but eventually it gets through. So weed, so mulching allow you to keep down your weed a bit longer. Now, the next advantage is that it reduces damage from the heat of the sun. So you want to protect... Um, oh, you didn't know that. Okay, right. So um, it reduces damage from the heat of the sun. It Organic mulch also had nutrients to your soil and it encouraged the beneficial insects to live in your soil as well. So that is another advantage of having mulch in your garden. It helps to keep the soil in the summer, to keep the soil cool in the summer. So this also is going to be beneficial because by keeping the soil in, then it reduces any damage that may occur to your plant roots. So your evening drier times, if you have mulch around your plants, then that will help to keep your plants much longer, especially in droughts. Okay, and another benefit is that it retains moisture. When the sun hits the soil, you can mulch at any point in time. There is no specific time to put mulch in your garden. Uh, a lot of people tend to put mulch in their garden over the fall because it has time to break down a bit and add nutrients to the soil. It also helps to prevent the growth of weed over the summer because, as you know, the grass might be dormant on the surface, but that doesn't prevent the roots from growing if it is properly insulated. So, um for that reason, you want to have your mulch there because it's going to help to slow down the growth. I, Russell, mulch anytime you see bare soil in your garden. 
Okay, yes. So um, we're going to be looking at mulching. And um, sometimes when you can mulch, of course, as we say, you can mulch anytime. But there are some advantages and disadvantages to when you actually decide to mulch your garden. So one other benefit of mulch is that it provides insulation for whatever crop you may have in your garden during colder season. So for example, now you know this is a time when a lot of people will plant things like your kale, your garlic, and some other root vegetables. The mulch provide insulation for these cold crops. And another benefit is that it saves you time it saves you money because when you have the mulch in your on your soil your moisture is going to be retained with a bit longer which means that you have you're going to be watering less and you don't have to pay for that water so this is also one of the benefits so do you use mulch in your garden I use mulch in my garden. I wasn't always mulching my garden. Uh, I used leaf initially when I start mulching my garden. I like to use leaf because the leaf breaks down quite easily and I can put a lot more on there than if I'm using the wood chips. No, they are organic mulch. I have inner organic mulch but I don't use anything in my garden if it is not organic. I don't. I don't like to see the leaves in my garden. <laughs> okay. What about mulching over the winter and taking it off back in the spring? What about that? Does it bother you if it is there even in the winter? I know you're a bit of a neat freak, so it might look a way off to you to have that in your garden. Yes, yeah, so as I was saying, I use leaves as mulch in my garden this year, however, because the city provides mulch free. So I got some of the wood chips that they provide and use it in my garden. No, I clean everything. Okay. Yes, yeah, so because the city provides mulch for free, so I got a lot of it and use it in my garden. Now, if you use, so what about you, Russell? Do you use mulch in your garden? I, uh, how long have you been using mulch in your garden, if you do? Well, I have been using mulch in my garden for maybe three years. Yeah. So, in the first two years, I used leaf. The second, now I'm using... Okay, so you just got done fishing. How oh, oh, was the fishing? I haven't been out fishing for a couple of months now. Did you catch anything? Do you have to go far to fish? I know that I have to go far. I have to drive. The closest fishing area to me is one and a half hours away. But it is fun. I do miss going out there, but I'm not going out there to fish when it's this cold. And you can't be on the ice either for the areas that's starting to ice up. You can't be on the ice. It's not thick enough, but you could fish off the shore because all of it is not frozen just yet. Yes, so uh, what... I do bury my food scraps in my garden over winter. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I thought you said fishing. I must be going blind. Okay. Not fishing. Fi um, finish mulching 10 minutes ago. Oh, cool. Yeah. It. So we're going to look now at... Um, the disadvantages of mulching 
And one of the disadvantage of mulching is that it harbors or it, it attracts some pests to your garden, things like earwigs, uh, slugs, cutworms and other pests because they like to live in areas that are, yes, slugs. They like to live in areas that are dark and cool and moist. And so this will actually encourage them to breed or increase their population. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, so it will cause them to increase their population. So this is the drawback of one of the drawbacks, slugs and snails, okay. Now, how can you prevent these pests in your garden when you mulch? What do you do, um, Russell, to prevent these pests? Do you have problems? Yes. I guess the fact that you mentioned slugs and snails mean that you have those in your area. Um, I have seen snails, tiny ones, um, in some regions in our city, but I've never seen any in my community. So I don't really have a problem with slugs or snails. But... Um, I do have earwigs, but I only see those in my compost bin. Occasionally, I don't really see a lot of them either. But um, I guess things like the cutworms, they, those ones would definitely be, are definitely in my garden. And this year is the first time I've ever had any experience with cutworms in my garden. And I'm wondering if it is related to the fact that I mulch my garden so heavily. So I don't know if that is what invited the cutworms. But anyway, this year I had a lot of problems with the cutworms. I've got a lot of very tiny ones, both slugs and snails. Okay. But you don't mulch, so at least that won't be inviting more of them. So you said a lot, eh? What do you use to treat the slugs and the snails? Okay, so um, how can you prevent these pests from going in your garden when you mulch? Well, what you can do is, let's see, use eggshells. Okay, does that work very well? I know that um, back in Jamaica when we were gardening, we would use wood ash and things like salt to keep the slugs out because the salt actually melt their bodies. So we use that. It works well with the snail. Okay, good, good. Okay, so yes, so make your mulch no more than three to four inches thick and that will help to reduce the chances of these pests multiplying in your garden because of your mulch. Now, another disadvantage is that mulch block the sunlight from your plants, from your seeds, so your seeds don't get to germinate because you know the plants need light. The seeds need light to germinate, so if you have a lot of mulch, then that will prevent most of your seeds from germinating. Now, how can you prevent this mulch from how can you prevent this mulch from stopping germination rate? Now let's see. On white says, but the salt is not good for the soil, is it? Um I don't really know to what extent it is bad for the soil. I don't know how much salt would you be thinking of using for them. Because if you're using salt for them, I would just be putting it around the perimeter of the garden to prevent them from going into the garden. I would not necessarily be putting it all over the garden. Yeah, one of the disadvantages of using the salt as well is that when you water your garden, or if it rains, then the salt is going to dissolve and then it's going to lose the effect that you desire. I just use lots of worm castings. 
just hand pick slugs. Snails, I think, are just meat. Okay. I guess you don't really have a lot of them then if you're able to go through and hand pick them, which is good. Right, so um, I was asking, how can you increase your germination rate when you use mulch? Well, to prevent um, the mulch from stop slowing down your germination rate, one of the things that you can do is rather than sowing your seeds directly in the garden, you could start it in a seed tray and then transplant it to your garden or you can remove the mulch from the area where you're going to be sowing your seeds. So each hole that you're going to be putting your seeds in, you clear that area so that the mulch is not directly up against your plant. Or you can wait until after your plants have grown a bit before you add mulch to your garden. So, yeah, waiting until after your plants have grown a bit. So... If you're going to be putting three to four inches of mulch, then you wait until the plant is taller than that, and then you add the mulch to your garden. Another disadvantage is that mulch prevents the soil from drying out quickly after every rain, and so you might end up with your garden being a bit soggy because it's not getting enough sunlight in order to dry it out quickly. And one of the reasons why I rather use leaf mulch than wood chips in my garden is because wood chips can have termites in them. And the termites, especially if you have raised beds, or in these cold countries where a lot of the houses are made from wood, you don't really want to have a lot. You don't really want to have termites on your property. So that is one of the disadvantages of using wood chips as mulch. Now, what are some of the challenges that you faced from mulching? When over the previous years, I've always been adding food scraps to my garden. I haven't done so in the last two years but I was always in the winter I would go out and throw the food scraps directly on the surface of the garden and let it stay there but then when I start using the leaf as mulch this year well it wouldn't be this year last year I had it a lot a lot lot of leaf to my garden when I say a lot some areas of 12 inches high some areas were even higher than that and for the first time this year I don't know if they are related but for the first time this year I had problems with cutworms so I don't know if maybe the cutworm eggs were on the leaves because I was collecting leaves from around the neighborhood so I don't know if maybe the cutworm eggs were on the leaves that I collected or if maybe the cutworms were always there in small amount but because i use the such a thick layer of mulch then that invites the cutworms to reproduce more so initially this um this spring when i planted my garden they decimated most of my crop so i had to replant thankfully a lot of these plants that i had i plant i started indoors and I had more than I actually needed so when the worms cut down the first set I still had enough where I could plant more in my garden. Your garden look untidy <laughs> okay they say that's the challenge that you have with mulch eh? yeah and the other thing is that when you go to plant your garden it's a challenge when you want to plant and you have to be moving the mulch out of your way in order to dig to the soil because especially when you use the wood chips because I don't want the wood chips to be going down into the soil. I want the wood chips to be on the surface but then you have to be moving the chips out of the way in order to dig your holes to plant your stuff but I guess that is okay. 
because the benefit far outweighs the disadvantages that we face. Now, what about benefits from um, after mulch in your garden? Have you seen any benefits? When I mulch my garden um, this year, I was collecting um, food scraps from a restaurant nearby that I had in my garden, and then I added the leaf to my garden. And for the first time since I've been here, the amount of worms that were in my garden was phenomenal. I was like every single hole that I dig to plant something, I had at least three worms in there. The worms were just everywhere. I know for a lot of people who are afraid of worms, this would not necessarily be a nice sight, although it has its benefit. But if you're afraid of worms, then you would not be too happy with that. But I, every hole, I was actually counting the worms. Sometimes I have three or more worms in each says after i buried my food scraps i have seen benefits okay what type of benefits have you seen and another one of the benefit that i saw that i had when i mulched my garden heavily this year is that um red wigglers are surface dwellers they feed on the surface so they don't bury themselves deep, which is why they tend to die when the time gets too cold because they're not going to dig down into the soil. They're just going to stay um, within the first two, three, four inches, maybe six inches off the surface. But when I added the food scraps and the mulch to my garden this year or over the fall, as I was going through my garden and I was saying that I saw a lot of worms in my garden, most of the worms that I saw this year were actually red wigglers, which was a surprise to me because at the point in time when I was digging in my garden, it was still cold outdoors. It had thawed, yes, but it was still too cold for the red wigglers. And I was seeing mature red wigglers, not just um, hatchlings and eggs. So the fact that they were mature it would indicate that they survive over the winter because it takes three months for worms to reach maturity. And these worms were mature, so it would indicate then that they survived the winter. So that is one of the benefits of mulching the garden. Since I started using mulch, the dirt has turned into soil. Yes. Yes, definitely. I am seeing that too. And when you think about it, when you look out in when you look out in nature, when you look out in nature, you go into the wild, there's always mulch on the ground, always leaf mulch on the ground. And the plants that grow in these forests and natural areas they are so healthy so beautiful so then we see that really the so the mulch provides nutrients it provides moisture for the plants and that is what is making the plants look so healthy in fact these plants that grow in the wild they actually do not get any uh, um any artificial fertilizers there is no pesticide on them um and look how beautiful they are if they can get below the frost line they can always come back up to the surface after the thaw well unfortunately the frost line here is between 8 and 15 feet deep so that would not really work for red wigglers because they're not going to bury themselves that deeply 
but red wig layers do go uh, do go down deep no they don't go deep they usually stay within the six top six inches two to three or sometimes six inches of soil so they will not when they feed they're always looking to what is on the surface if the entire area where they are is food then they will stay there so if you have a lot of organic material no matter how deep the material is they will go down if it is soil however they will not go down they will stay wherever their food is and that is why they die when the winter comes because the organic material is, is not deep enough for them to go beyond the frost line. But it is pretty good to see that so much of them survive over the winter. Yes, yeah, so as I was saying, when you look at um, when you look at the things that grow in the wild that don't get hard, um, artificial fertilizers and they don't get they don't you don't go in there and spray them with pesticides and how well they are doing so really we don't need to use anything more than just these organic mulch which will break down eventually and become the nutrients for the plants that we need and i did water less so that's one benefit that i saw this year as well no why should you not use green wood chips in your garden because a lot of times you will see people they get the wood chip cutter and they would cut down the trees the trees may or may not be dry and right away they're putting it in their garden as mulch but why would why should you not use green wood chips in your garden no for wood chips to break down, wood chips require a lot of nitrogen. If you put green wood chips in your garden, do you know what's going to happen? All of the nitrogen that is in the soil that your plants need is going to go directly to the wood chips and not to your plants. And then your plants are not going to do well if in fact they might die because they don't have sufficient nitrogen to keep them going so that is why you don't want to use wood chips in your garden not wood chips but the green wood chips so what can you do if you have the green wood chips and you would like to use it as mulch you can create a compost heap with just the wood chips you can add um your gra grass clippings to it and then this grass clipping you want to make sure that your heap is at least three feet high and three feet wide all around because that is going to encourage it to heat up and then this with the heat is going to encourage excuse me it's going to encourage the wood chip to break down and compost it as it were so the chip is not going to break down and disintegrate into compost very quickly but at least it will have it will make your wood chip at that point where it breaks down to the point where it does not require any extra nitrogen to break down then you can use it the grass clipping is rich in nitrogen so this is going to increase the heating process of your wood chips so that it can break down quicker and then or quickly then you can use it in your garden so don't use the green wood chips if you have um if however you decide to use wood chips in your garden and you have the ones that have been already gone that has already gone through the heat process that is good because it is going to one the heat may kill the termites and their eggs that are in the wood chips if any survive then you can put things like cornmeal or anything that you know organic material that kills ants into your garden spread it around your garden because they may feed on this and then it will result in their death so you have to be careful what you use as mulch in your garden
Okay. So, as I mentioned, this live is a question and answer. So, if you have any questions, you can. Oh, sorry, I just heard a noise outdoors. I was wondering if maybe the kids are getting themselves in trouble. Yeah, so if you have questions, you can feel free to go ahead and ask your questions. And I'll be happy to answer whatever ones I can. I'm just looking here to see if I'm missing anybody's name on the list here. Okay, good. So I have all the questions that was asked covered. That's good. Okay, so are you looking forward to gardening next year? What plans are you making for your garden? I've got so much planned for my garden this, um, well, next year. I've got a lot of ideas on what I want to grow. I have been looking at other people's videos, see what it is that they're growing because I am, you know, we're habitual creatures. I don't really like to step out of my comfort zone with growing stuff, but I have quite a few things that I want to be growing this year. So I am researching them to see how to grow them and what I need in order to grow them. Have you thought about living, living mulch? What is that? I don't know if maybe you made an error in, um, in your question or if that is what you actually want to ask. Have you thought about living mulch? I'm not familiar with that. Can you explain? I have been prepping my garden and planning what I want to plant where. Good idea. Yeah, I have been doing that too. I did so much this year. This is the first year that I've actually spent so much time after the growing season in my garden to prep for the following year. I did a lot of trellis, um, made a lot of trellis for the garden. I did a lot of... Um, I fertilized the soil with compost. I didn't have any castings to it because the castings cannot survive the freezing. So that I'm going to have to do when the growing season starts. But I added the compost to the garden already. Then I mulched over the compost. I um, laid out the garden in terms of what I'm going to plant where. Um, some of the material, that some of the things that I'm going to be growing, I already know what I'm going to be interplanting with what, but I st I'm still working on that because I'm planning to grow a lot more variety of crop than I did previously. What are some of the things that you're planning to grow? Uh, this year I'm going to be growing sweet potatoes. Well, try to grow sweet potatoes. I don't really have a long growing season, but I really want to grow sweet potatoes. And I want to try a variety of them. I've never grown the Japanese yam, as it is called, which is actually another variety of sweet potato. I really want to grow that to see just how it turned out. Any potato, as a matter of fact, doesn't really matter. I would like to see, like to grow it and see if I can harvest, actually get to harvest from it. But um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to have to start it pretty early in the year, next year, if I want to be able to harvest because those things take at least six months to grow. And our growing season is three to four months. I'm still going to be planting the members of the cabbage family. So this year I planted broccoli. I planted kale, the Nero kale, and I had uh, Russian kale. 
but I'm going to be planting the curly kale this um, next year as well. And I planted one type of, what is it called, parsley, the flat type. So now I'm going to be doing the curly. And I have so many things I want to plant. Well, we'll see how it goes with time and space. Right, so um, I have been burying food scraps in my tomato beds. I did it last year and I didn't have to fertilize the bed this year. Nice, nice. It's like cover crop type. It's like cover crop type. Oh, okay. Yeah, that are grown in the understory of the main crop at the same time, living mulch. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, um, I've never really, never really done that. So, um, would something like growing sweet potatoes be considered a cover crop? So um, this year I'm planning to grow my corns with uh, peas and beans and the peas and beans I'm going to trellis onto the corns and then the sweet potatoes I'm planning to run to plant it among the corns but that is going to be running on on the ground so would that would that um, sweet potato be considered a cover crop in that case or is it would you plant the cover crop like after the growing season Okay, so um, as I was saying that I grew these um, various types of cabbage this year, but um, my crops got decimated, all of the cabbage family, most of it got decimated because of the cutworms and the cabbage moths and stuff like that. So next year I'm going to be doing a lot of interplanting in order to try and control that um that might be i am not sure okay so you've never grown a cover crop then um i started looking into it some time ago but uh i didn't really get to do much where that is concerned in terms of my research so i'm going to be doing a lot more of that this year probably over the fall or the winter so that i can become more familiar with it because I know that for one thing they were saying using the peas and beans as a cover crop is excellent because of the amount of nitrogen that it um, replaces in the soil. So I'm thinking about doing that, but I'm going to have to research it so that I can know exactly when and how to do it so that I can get it right. So when you use um, on white, you're saying that um, you bury the food scraps in your garden and for the entire year, you didn't have to fertilize that bed. That is interesting. You must have had quite a lot of food scraps to that, um, to that bed because, I mean, plants that produce fruits are usually heavy eaters. And if you were able to go the entire year after burying your food scraps, and you went the entire year without having to fertilize. That is pretty good. I'm always a bit scared of not having enough nutrients in my soil. So even if I bury the food scraps or even if I had compost to my material or to my soil at the start of the growing season, I still usually go around and add more to it because 
I don't really want to see my plants dying. So it's pretty nice that you were able to, raise, to grow your tomatoes to maturity without having to fertilize again. And one of the benefits um, of being uh, fertilizing after you have added your initial fertilizer to your soil for me is that I use worm casting so it won't damage my plants because the, the nitrogen level is not very high to the point where it's going to cause any damage and then because it slowly releases the nutrients over time so the plants at least I know that my plants won't be getting all the nutrients all at once which can be harmful to your plants say yes I didn't I started burying the food scraps from November okay now that's pretty good I use worm castings too okay yeah I don't know I, I love love to use worm castings I'm gonna have to see though comparison between the castings and compost see if any is better because it is said that the casting is better but i would like to see the result the difference in using both of them for myself so that is going to be an experiment for next year okay so um i've covered all the questions that i had here so if you don't have any more questions then i'm going to be ending the live here i am thankful for all of you who took part in this live thank you for keeping the live active and going and i hope you have yourself a wonderful day Please like up the live. Oh, thank you, Hanoi. Yeah, so um, that is it, guys. I'm just going to hello. Well, I guess most of who are on the live are private, so you won't get to see a lot of people that you can actually gain subs from. But I'm thankful that you were all here. Okay, Russell, have a good night, all of you and stay safe and i'll see you next week friday i will well not next week on friday i will be doing my worm video q a so that will be maybe somewhere around 11 12 o'clock on friday so i'll be notifying you of the time so stay tuned for that if you have questions you can jot them down and be prepared to ask your questions about worm farming at that point in time and I will answer whatever questions I can. So have a good night. Peace out.